Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we are going to begin working on page eight of Casa Grande, which is the same as page one, and I'm hoping I can incorporate all the lessons I learned from page one. So I've got my uh, papers trimmed out, or most of them. I still have to do um, a couple more, but most of them are trimmed out. So this is gonna be our base. This is from the eight by eight collection pack. I'm gonna set that aside because we need to attach our, our um, flaps first. And um, this is from the backgrounds. Yeah, this is all, all the blue ones are from the background collection pack. And I'm separating them this way because they actually are all trimmed to fit the specific flap. Um, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and install these. And then we'll add the front and back of the flap. And then we'll put the base down. Okay, so flaps. Um, you have the two left and right and the top and bottom. So the left and right are two and a half by eight, two and a half by eight. And you are going to score a half inch on the two and a half inch side. And then you're going to do a one inch mark miter. And what I mean by that is lay this down and from the edge, go in one inch and then come down to the hinge uh, at a diagonal. And that's going to be a one inch miter. You're going to do that two times for the left and right. And then for the top and bottom, I added an extra little gusset because this, this is a pretty thick page. And these are going to be the two flaps that wind up being on top. So this is two and five eighths by eight, two and five eighths by eight. You're going to score that at a half an inch and five eighths, half inch and five eighths. And then the miter is going to be different. You're going to come in two inches from the edge, make a tick mark, and then you're going to do your slope from seven to the eight inch mark. And over here, it's gonna be one to the zero mark. So again, you're gonna come in two inches. So you're gonna put a tick mark at two and at six, and then do a diagonal to the score line. Bring it down to the five eighths inch score line, not the half inch. So stop at the five eighths. Okay, so you're gonna do that twice. So let's go ahead and get these installed. Mm, as soon as I find my tool, here we go. And I just tried to miter the um, bottom part of the hinge to um, prevent having a whole bunch of overlap in the corner. Okay, when you're installing these, you wanna make sure you're on the half inch score line to the edge of your pocket page. Okay, so you're gonna fold that gusset down and make sure you're installing this on the actual half inch. score line. There we go. Okay, that's the, you know, that says, yeah, it's page eight. Okay, I thought I picked up the wrong page. <laughs> I was double checking what I had written here. I thought it said page three because it was so faint. Okay, now as usual, I'm going to turn the whole thing around, bring the top to me just because it's easier to see. I always move the paper to me rather than trying to pull myself over the page. Again, fold it so that the gusset is on the top and that you're laying this down on the half inch mark. Or score line is what I meant to say. And there we go. Now we're gonna uh, install the left and right. I'm gonna bring it back around. It's I'm keeping track of the top and the bottom because I've trimmed out each of these pieces to fit a specific panel. So it's hard to be exactly precise when doing some of these diagonals. So I'm sure I could figure it out. I'd just be shuffling paper around. So now we're gonna install our left. And again, this is just flush with the edge. There we go. And again, I mitered these corners just so there wouldn't be a whole lot of overlap here, um, so the corners aren't bulky. I'm gonna test this one. This one I think I could probably take a little more off this side just to prevent the um, an overlap. Is that right? Yeah, an overlap. And it's not, I mean, if you overlap, it's okay. It'll just be a little bit bulkier is all. Okay, that looks good. Make sure you're not going into your gusset. 
on the um, ju juxtaposed flaps and I didn't get all the way on the edge. So I'm going to lift that. I need to come down just a little bit. I got a little ahead of myself. There we go. Perfect. Okay, there's our upside. Okay, now I'm going to start by laying down the blue pieces, which I've already inked and trimmed. These are all, again, the on the inside, B side. We'll check my measurements one more time. Last chance. I've got ink on it. Can't remember if I pushed record. I did. Good. I forgot to do that a couple of times on page one. Okay, there we go. And then this is our last inside. Just checking the fit. It's pretty good, but not great. So I'm going to take a little off, make that a little bit better. That should, yeah, it looks better on this side. I finally got a little table to go over here on my right hand side so I can just twist and trim and I don't have to get out of my chair. I hurt my back the other day and the getting up and down was killing me so I came up with a solution. It's not perfect but it's it's working. They need to come up with configurable craft furniture so that you can change it based on the craft you're doing. If you're painting, you want it one way. If you're doing paper craft, you want it one way. If you're doing jewelry, you want something different. Okay, so there we are. So now we've got this beautiful piece that's gonna go here. And again, this is from the 8 by 8 collection pack. And um, I'm just, because we just put hinges all the way around, I wanna make sure that I've got it trimmed down enough that it can close without inter interference. And it looks good and I baked it, so we're ready to go. And of course, I always trim my 8x8 down just a little bit anyway, but because you've got hinges on all four sides, you might even need to come down a little bit more. So make sure you dry fit before you lay it down, and that all your hinges are closing without um, trying to uh, bend your base paper out of the way. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Blue, and then we've got some light colors in here. I think it's gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna um, burnish that down real quick. Okay, that's lovely. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so now we're ready to put the A side down. So I trimmed these out for the A side. Now I'm rethinking it. 
because I don't like the way they look. So I'm going to hold off on that right now. We're going to go ahead and install our, um, our panels to these. So these are going to be installed one inch from the edge, come down one inch, and we're going to install these centered um, all the way around. Is that right? That's not what I did on the other one. What did I do on the other one? Yes, that's true. So you're going to have a total of four six by six panels all the way around. So let me get my Tim Holtz and I'm going to mark, do my one inch reference line. I'm going one inch from the black cardstock, not from the inset designer paper. Set this aside so I can go ahead and mark all of these. Oops. Last one. There we go. Okay, there's nothing unique about each one, so we'll just start where we're at. I'm gonna set these aside because I'm not sure. I looked at this next to the pattern I was planning on putting on top and I'm not liking it. So we'll see, we shall see. Okay, so this is gonna be the top. I'm gonna turn it through. The top and the bottom flaps are going to be the ones that I'm going to use to guide the placement of everything else. So as I did in, in page one, I'm going to get one of these laid down. And then as I go around and attach the others, I'm going to close the flaps and make sure it stays hidden behind uh, the top one. So that is the goal. Okay. Looks good. Okay. Okay. Now the top and bottom you can glue, you can put glue across the whole thing, but on the left and right, the six by six is actually shorter, so you're gonna stop short of the edge. Let's go ahead and get this one in, then we'll do the, the other top one. So I'm Pushing it down just a little bit more because I don't want my corners to hang off the edge here. So your corners should be flush with this so that you don't have anything hanging out that could get caught. Okay, so there's one. Okay, so we're gonna do this one next. And I'm gonna glue it down and then I'm gonna close both and I'm gonna make sure that they are, um, this one is hidden beneath this one or vice versa. Okay, here we go. So I'm being very generous on the glue so I have some wiggle time. Okay, I'm looking to see if it's sticking out at all, and it is a little bit on this side. So I'm gonna adjust it, and I'm also trying to make sure that my gussets are standing straight. They are, okay. Okay, we're gonna do that two more times. Now remember, stop short, because this is only six inches wide. I know it's hard to see, but I do have a reference line here that's helping me out. Okay, lay this down, see if I'm behind everything. And it looks good. So I'm gonna press that into place. 
one more time. Okay, last one over here. And I'm using this as the, what's gonna be on the front. So add this one, I think. I'm gonna, I, I keep going back and forth. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Mm, yeah, okay. So the way this is designed is, oops, I got some glue there. That's no good. Is gonna go one, two, three, four. So these are the gussets. Okay, there we go. That's that. Okay. So I'm gonna go around and burnish everything. Then I'm gonna start lining up the rest of my designer paper so we can finish page eight. I'll be back soon. Okay, everyone. I I had trimmed out these, these papers earlier, and this was going to be my topper, and I did not like the way that went. So I went ahead and went back to my papers and chose this pattern. Oh my gosh. And I cut it up before. Oh, I hate it when I do that. I cut it up before I realized. I'm pretty sure this is from the 12 by 12 collection. Let me see if I've got any more of that. Let's see if I can't match the scale. Okay, that is, this is my eight by eight, so I'm gonna check real quick. Uh, that, that stinks, doesn't it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Where's the wood? right here and I don't I think this is 12 by 12 let me look real quick sorry about that so I'm going to cut apart this. it appears to be the 12 by 12 although I can't find these two Patterns. Where is that? I'm trying to find this one with the clock. I must have used it someplace else because I don't see it here. So I'm pretty sure it's from the 12 by 12. Um, uh, although it's 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 the smaller patterns of the flowers and pomegranates, um, if that helps out at all. And it looks a little bit lighter than the 8x8 eight eight for some reason. Uh, when I say lighter, I mean paler. Okay, I think I've got everything inked. So I'll go ahead and lay these pieces in. This one's a little tricky because it's got that gusset. It's hard to see. Okay, there we go. So there's one. Now, this is going to be the top piece and it's gonna get applied here, but I'm gonna hold off on this for a minute because I'm pretty sure I need to put a magnet in here. So for the time being, I'm just gonna use some of my temporary tape to hold it in place. Rotate around. I'm dry fitting real quick, but I think everything is ready to go. It's 
So this is the A side of those little flaps, the two inch flaps, two and a half inch. I like this page design, but it takes a lot of paper. So you need two full sheets just to do the six by six front and back. And then two, four, six, eight, two eight by eights, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, yeah. Two eight by eight pieces of paper to cover your two inch flaps. So that's two and a half pieces of paper. Uh, no, two 12 by 12s and two 8 by 8s. Sorry about that. So a total of four papers. So four 12 by 12s or two 8 by 8s and two 12 by 12s, whichever, depending on what paper you're using. Okay. And I realized why I was having trouble with my planning on this one. And uh, this is a calendar collection. So one of the sheets is a calendar. So I have one less pattern than I would normally have to work with. I think I need to trim that down a little. So I'm just making... Do I? Nope, it looks good. It's hard to see black on black. We're having a windy day here, but it, it stopped raining. It's very cold outside. My sister lives about 20 miles from me, and she got a bunch of hail. I know everybody's anxiously awaiting this album. I get feedback almost every day. When's it coming? So I'm trying to finish it up. We are on page eight, so yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, there we go. So there's our closed position. The corner's a little rough here. I'm going to trim it. There we go. Perfect. All right. So that's it. That's our, whoops, our closed position. So now we need to... Go ahead and attach this, and then we're going to start covering those. So I'm just matching up my corners and then I'm gonna lay it down. Like so. Oh, you know what? I told you I needed to wait because we need to put a magnet in there. Oh no, I'm gonna put the magnet on this side. We're, we're still okay. I need to put a note magnet before I cover this. It's gonna go here and on here. Scribble that on there to catch my attention. And there we go. So I should go ahead and probably place our magnets. And then I'm going to pick out. Oh, here's the, yeah. So here's my 8x8 that I was looking for. So for sure, that one that I was going back and forth on, this is definitely from the 12x12. 12 12. It's the flip side. I'm just going to put it kind of in the middle, kind of in the middle. 
since I have to cover this. And on page one, it was over to the right, and that's because I had made a mistake earlier on and was trying to cover it. So I just want to make sure it's off away from, well, does it matter? Not really. Okay, now before you press your magnet into place, you're going to want to make sure all the gussets are standing and your pages are closed and flat before you press this into place because it'll cause your page to go uh, one way or another. So I'm just making sure my everything is at a nice, crisp, right angle. This one was not, so I'm going to stand that up a little more. This one looks good. Stand that up. Now I'm going to press that in place. Uh, once we get the additional layers on, that's going to help it stand in, stand up on its own. Okay, here we go. Now remember, we're going to put another six by six here, so we don't have to worry about covering that up. Is that what I did? Yes, that is. Okay, so we're going to have a second six by six here. And the reason I'm using another piece of paper is um, I want there to be a border all the way around it. And if we just laid a piece of designer paper down here, we'd have a border around three of the four sides, but not the four side. But I also just like that it keeps it really rigid. Um, and this is a kind of a big panel, so I like that idea. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down and a six by six over here. Then we'll look for some designer paper. So if this is really a preference. If you just want um, to have three of the four sides covered with a border, then you don't really need to do the six by six. But the investment really isn't in the black cardstock. It's in the designer paper. So I, I like to make sure that the designer paper is popping. And an easy way to do that is to get a uh, frame around it. So that's my thought process. I'm actually going to open this up. And lay it down this way so I can see my sides a little better. Okay, so this is going to feel nice and rigid, especially once we get cardstock on, on this side. So it feels pretty rigid with just two black, but we're going to add two pieces of designer here shortly. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing over here on this side. And then I'm going to pull in page one and show you something because we have a couple of options. Oh, you know what? I didn't trim out a six by six, so that'll take a second. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is gonna go right here. I mentioned in page one, if you wanted to leave one of these four sides open, you could have this be have a, be like a pocket page. Oh, you know what? That already has a six by six on it. It's already doubled. I that's that's what I wanted. I'm I don't know what I'm doing. I got mixed up. And then we have okay, our magnet right there. I messed up. Um so I don't really need to have glue on this. So now what I was gonna say is we have some options here. So we're gonna put a six by six designer paper here and here, here and here. And then here we have the option to add a six by six panel or to only cover this five by six. And in page one, I'm gonna pull that in so you can see in page one, that's what I did is I just did uh, a five by six here. And part of that was to save paper. So six by six all the way around on the inside, five by six left and right, and then two six by six top and bottom. So I think that's the direction I'm gonna go in. And part of that, like I said, is because I'm trying to preserve paper. So on the top and bottom, I'm gonna go six by six. And then on the a side of left and right, I'm going to go five by six, and then on the inside, six by six. Inside, cover all four panels, and then left and right, we're going to do five by six. So that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to go line my paper up, and you guys will see what my decision is. And of course, you've got the option um, to add a six by six panel here, 
or to just go five by six like I'm doing. Be back soon. Okay guys, I made a couple of choices. Okay, as I mentioned, I'm gonna do the five by fives here. So let's go ahead and do that. This is from the patterns or the background. I'm sorry, I keep calling them patterns. The background is what they call it at Stamperia. So let me turn that down just a little bit. Probably still need to add some ink as well. Let's see how this fits. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to add some ink and we'll glue that down. This is pretty. I think it looks really good next to the roses. And I also think it's going to be very easy to put a photo on top of. So I try to keep that in mind. where we're going to place the second one. little bit more. I'd rather cut a little at a time than to over trim. It looks like we got it just right now. Moving right along, guys. Okay, this is on left, right, A side. Just as a reminder of where we are. Lovely, lovely. It's not pretty. Very easy to see a picture here. Okay, there's our left and right. So I have all the B sides for the flaps to go. Okay, now this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack, and it is the tag page. Um, I took part of the um, tags and set them aside. I've already trimmed them out. I think it was one strip so that I could get uh, the tags, two, four, I think six tags out of it. And then uh, this is two um, panels that are going to go up and down. And then to trim it. This should fit, let me double check. It, it still needs to come down a little more. If you're not sure, lay it in and put your little little marks. I um kind of gotten used to just eyeballing it because I make so many of these, but in the beginning that's not what I did. I would I would mark my spot, trim it, check it. It's always good to dry fit. I try to rough cut and set aside my papers as a part of the um, build process. Um, so um, then I can continue to see what paper remains for planning the next page. So these aren't always trimmed to fit um, exactly until I'm ready to actually do the install. 
And then also, you'll notice if you put a score line in anything, it can change the size of the panel. So it's always good to dry fit it before you're ready to install. It's your last chance to make any alterations. Okay, and then we're gonna do this one. I'm sure I've got the same situation. I need to trim. Okay. Look at that one more time. Looks good. If you're new to the channel, I do a 16th inch border. So you basically take your flap size or panel size, six by six, take off one eighth in height and width, and that will give you a nice 16th inch border. Some people like to do an eighth inch, which in case you would take a quarter inch off height and a quarter inch off width, and then you'll have one eighth inch border. Black is so bold, I think a 16th is, is good. When you're doing white or cardstock, I think uh, an eighth inch looks just as good. Okay, so now we have the A sides. Uh, nope, that's not true. Two B sides, we still have two B sides yet to be done. And then we have um, this A side remaining. Okay, so we need to do something here. And these two. So I'm gonna go line up those papers and be right back and then we're gonna wrap up page eight. Okay guys, I got a couple more things lined up for us. So we're gonna finish uh, the inside here. And I've got this, which is from the patterns, or I keep saying that background. And then this one is from the 12 by 12. And I believe the green is from the um, background pack as well. Okay, I'm dry fit. So we're going to do some color blocking because uh, I'm running out of uh, paper the right size. Do I want this here or here? Here. And this strip here just happens to be two inches. So I had a four inch piece uh, laying around. I cut that in half. It was a four by 12 and I cut it in half. So I've got two, two inch, and then we're gonna cut this down to fit. And this happened to be a four inch panel. Is that right? Mm, little four and, four and an eight. But I'm gonna trim this down to fit. And I'm <clears throat> gonna think about where I wanna trim from. Because I want them to both look the same. Uh, I think I'm going to trim from the wood side. And this is upside down, but I'm, no, it's not. It's right side up. This one's upside down because I want the wood to be uh, centered. You can't tell because this is just a pattern on this side, but I know I'm doing it upside down based on the leaves. But I still want the wood to be on the inside. I think it looks better. Okay, I'm going to mark this, trim it. Check it. Looks good. Do I have it the right height? It looks good. I'm gonna ink it and lay it down.
I like it. I love color blocking. It's one of my favorite things to do. Okay, so we got the front and back of this one, front and back of this one. We want to lay down our two inch strip first. Let's dry fit. I definitely need to trim it and get it oriented right. I had, had my words upside down. A little more. There we go. Sorry about that. Somebody must be at the front door. I hope it's home. He'll get it. neat. I just think the frame in a frame is kind of a cool idea. I hope you guys like it too. It is a paper hog though. The good news is it's a, there's a lot of photo storage um, on these pages. I'm looking for my pencil. There it is. You know what? I'm not happy with that. I'm going to pull it up. It's crooked, so I'm going to pull that up real quick. And I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to trim it down. I I dry fit, but I, I, must, have, I must have missed something because it's definitely not fitting right. i got to let it dry so it doesn't get on my trimmer. So, yeah. So the last thing is we need a piece for this panel. And I have some six by six here, so let's kind of go through and see if we see something that we like. That's actually, I kind of like that. Um, I don't like this. It's just the scales off, and it also doesn't look good with the roses. And this is a quarter of a quarter panel. I don't care for that. This would be okay. So those are our two choices so far. I don't like part of the plates. Again, these, the scale looks just way too off. That's another option. But I actually like this better because I get the whole word in. And this is from, I believe, the 12 by 12. And this is for, yeah, I can tell by the scale, 12 by 12. And this is 12 by 12. So it's that. Nope. So this, which is pretty homey. But let's keep in mind that this is what, Oh, that's not the top. What's on top? This is what's on top. So that kind of goes with it, but I'm not crazy about it. I don't like this. It's just too much of the roses on top of the roses. I do like that. I think this is what we'll go with. Yeah. So while we're waiting for this to dry up, uh, let's go ahead and put this down. Again, this is from the 12 by 12. It looks like it's ready to go. It's even inked. How about that? Maybe I already made this decision and I forgot it and made it again. <laughs> you know, if you make the same decision twice, it's the right one, right? Okay. Beautiful. We are moments away from completing this page. It's not a hard page. Uh, I guess it's not hard, but it's tedious because of those angles. It does take a little bit of time because you have to do it... 12 different times, right? Front, back, and then the base. 
So it takes a little bit of time. There we go, looking good. Last piece. I think it's dry enough that I can lay it in and figure out what I had done wrong from a trim perspective. And yeah, it's definitely off here on this end. So I'm gonna trim a little more off. And then it should be good to go. But I will check it one more time. How do we do, girls? Ladies, looks good. It doesn't want to slide because the glue on there is not completely dry. Beautiful. Am I doing it right? Yeah. It's just making sure I want my wood on the outside. There we go. I said outside, but inside. I was wrong. Okay, and that concludes page eight. Let me clean up my space and then we're gonna go through this one more time so you guys can take a last look at it before the walkthrough. Get everything out of our visual field. <clears throat> Okay, that is page eight. So that is the top of page eight. It's the top, but it's the bottom flap. That was confusing, sorry. There's our top flap, right, left, and there are all the paper choices. Hopefully I got everything in the field of vision for you. Okay, this goes down, this goes that. There we go, isn't that beautiful? So I'm either gonna put some embellishment, but this is a great place to put a little three by three photo. Um, also, let's, let me trim something out. Let's do that, let's take a look at it. I'm kind of curious now. Here. Let's do four by four. Four by four. Four by four. So four by four is too big because we're going to cover up too much of the uh, teapot, I think. So let's try three by three. Yep, you could put a little three by three here. Um, and this is all, or a three by five. Um, this is also just a great place to do your journaling as well. Do some fancy handwriting and journaling. Get a attach ticket stubs if you guys went to a tea party. Um, you know, and, and uh, there was some memorabilia or uh, bits of uh, a menu that you want to save, this would be a good spot for it too. So just a couple of ideas. Anyways, that concludes page eight. Um, and I will be back uh, to wrap up this album very soon. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create.